Welcome to your week 8 lecture. This week we cover the urinary system and the male reproductive system. Let's get started. Here is the urinary system. These are the objectives. They're the same ones you have in Connect. This system is also known as the renal system and the excretory system. It comprises the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder along with the urethra. This system helps us eliminate waste from the blood through filtration and aids in water balance as well as salt and other electrolytes. Uro refers to the urine, while ology means the study of, therefore urology is the study of urine. A urologist is a surgeon of the urinary system. Nephro refers to the kidney, and again, ology refers to the study of, so nephrology is the study of kidneys. A nephrologist is a medicine doctor over kidney function and diseases and performs dialysis. Here are some important combining terms for the urinary system. Nephro and reno both mean kidney, while urethro refers to the ureters. And cysto and vesico refer to the bladder. Lastly, urethra refers to the urethra. The kidneys not only filter what we do not want from the blood and place in the urine, but they also can reabsorb what we want to keep out of the urine and place it back in the blood. Urine leaves the kidney via the ureters and onto the bladder, then out the urethra. A couple of more combined terms for you. Pilo refers to the renal pelvis, and calico or calico or calio and calico refer to the calyces or the calyx, which are more important parts of the kidney. You will learn about uh, kidney anatomy more in anatomy physiology too. The glomerulus is where the filtration and reabsorption take place. Glomerulo refers to gl the glomerulus. The kidney has roughly one million glomeruli. Uro and ureno both refer to urine, and urea is a suffix that means of the urine. The kidneys have other functions too besides filtering the blood and fluid balance. The kidneys are principally in charge of blood pressure in the body through the RAAS or renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This is a system that helps increase blood volume and constrict arteries to raise the blood pressure when we need to do so. Just like this cup, the bladder receives the urine for storage until urination can take place. It receives the urine from the kidneys by way of the ureters and then will avoid the urine through the urethra at the time of urination. Here is the bladder. Remember, cysto and vesico both mean bladder. Trigono refers to the trigon. This is where the ureters enter the bladder, and if this area becomes inflamed, it's called trigonitis. Here's some more terms for you. This urea is painful urination. It literally means difficult urination, since dis refers to difficult. Oliguria means scant or low urine output, while anuria is without urination. Urinary incontinence means loss of control of urination. It can be due to stress or urge incontinence or both. Hematuria is blood in the urine, and nocturia is urinating more frequently at night than normal. To understand why patients have symptoms like we just went over, we need testing. And testing the urine sample is the most crucial for understanding what is going on with the kidneys. We get a urine a sample using the clean catch method, which is the best we can do to maintain a sterile sample. But the most ideal way to have a sterile sample is by straight catheterization of the urethra. But this is not very pleasant for the patient. A urinalysis is just a dipstick test of the urine sample. It can be ran on a computer or like here by eye reading color changes from the bottle. A urinalysis covers pH if the sample is more acidic or basic, a check for blood or microscopic hematuria, specific gra gravity which tells us the patient just gave us toilet water or which happens in drug testing situations, ketones if they're starving or have diabetes, glucose if they have diabetes, leukocyesterase if white cells are present, Nitrites show if bacteria are present, and lastly, it can show bilirubin in the urine, which occurs in cirrhosis or liver disease. A KUB x-ray film is a picture of the kidneys, ureters, and bladder, and is used to look for kidney stones. Only calcium kidney stones can be seen on an x-ray film like this, and calcium is the most common type of kidney stone. You can see other stones by using dye, and this is an IVP x-ray study. 
A CT or computerized tomography scan is also an x-ray, but a lot more images in cross sections. We can see calcium stones well on non-contrasted CT scans like this large stone in the patient's right kidney here. An ultrasound of the kidney can help us assess kidney size. This is important as acute kidney injury may have an enlarged kidney. This is called hydronephrosis. In chronic kidney disease, like this kidney, it is usually smaller than normal. Urinary tract infections are very common. There are two main ones to know, pyelonephritis and cystitis. Pyelonephritis is a kidney infection. It has fever, chills, and is much more serious. The patient will have flank pain as well as the symptoms of cystitis. Cystitis is a bladder infection and is very common. It will have dysuria, but no fever, increased urgency, and a foul urine called pyuria. Kidney failure has two main types, acute and chronic. Chronic renal failure is kidney disease over a long period of time, usually dealing with such diseases as diabetic nephropathy or an autoimmune disease like lupus nephritis. Acute renal failure, also called acute kidney injury, is new onset of renal failure and has three types. First is pre-renal or before the kidney, like dehydration, blood loss, or fluid immobilization problems like in cirrhosis or heart failure. Next is intrinsic, uh, which deals with a direct attack on the kidney, like in acute tubular necrosis or ATN. Last is post-renal, and this is obstructive uh, of the obstruction of the urine outflow, like kidney stones or an enlarged prostate in men. In renal failure, does not go get any better. Then the patients have to go on dialysis, either to wait for a kidney transplant or for their own kidneys to heal. The most common type of dialysis is hemodialysis which is direct filtering the blood using pumping machine and a filtering process along with a liquid dialyzer. This requires good access to the patient's circulatory system and can be a risk for blood-borne pathogens if not kept very sterile. It requires three to five hours per day and three times a week, so it makes it hard for the patient to work. If no kidney transplant is possible for the patient, then they will stay on this for the remainder of their lives. Peritoneal dialysis can be done at home, which makes it more convenient. Instead of uh, the blood, it uses a patient's peritoneum in the abdomen to filter out waste. Home hemodialysis can also be done, but requires good sterile technique. If obstructed renal failure is present, then place a Foley catheter. These are also placed via the patient's urethra for patients who are unable to void due to surgeries or to keep a very close eye on urinary output. They can also be used in patients with chronic incontinence to keep the bed from being wet. The risk of using this for too long, though, is recurrent, very resistant urinary tract infections. Kidney stones in themselves are not very painful and are called nephrolithiasis. When they travel and enter the ureter, then it is called urethrolithiasis. Most stones will pass on their own, but if they get stuck, this can lead to obstructive renal failure and hydronephrosis. They can be removed via the urethra and urethroscopy and broken up by lithotripsy. Now on to the male reproductive system. Here are your objectives. They're the same ones you have in Connect. Here's the male anatomy with the most important combining forms. Andro means men. Balano refers to the gland's penis. Prostata refers to the prostate gland, epididymo to the epididymis, scrotal refers to the scrotum, and finally orco, orchio, and orchido were all refer to the testes. Now for a close-up of this testis, epididymo refers to the epididymis, vaso refers to the vessel or ductus deferens, like the vas deferens. When the vas deferens are cut, this is a vasectomy. Spermo and spermato both refer to sperm. Semino refers to semen. Testosterone is the primary male androgen or hormone that makes humans look like men. We, we are all by default female sex until the Y chromosome causes testosterone to make male characteristics. Now on to the male reproductive system pathology. The prostate gland is essential for most of, of the ejaculate or fluid of ejaculation. 
but it can be enlarged chronically, making it harder for a man to, to avoid as it constricts the urethra. This can lead to uh, post-renal or obstructive renal failure. Testosterone can cause BPH, or it can just come from growing older. The prostate gland can become inflamed acutely uh, or chronically. This is called prostatitis. This is usually acute from an infectious source and can be treated by sometimes uh, can be long-term or chronic. Enlarged prostates can obstruct urinary outflow from the urethra, causing post-renal failure. The prostate gland can become cancerous. In fact, most men will get prostate cancer if they live long enough. This can also cause the urethra to become obstructed and cause obstruction of, or post-renal failure. Prostate cancer grows slowly, but can spread to other areas of the pelvis and beyond, given enough time. Prostate cancer is diagnosed by symptoms of a weak urine stream, nocturia, hematuria. A PSA, or prostate-specific antigen, is drawn uh, from the blood along with doing a digital rectal exam. If these are positive, then a biopsy of the prostate is done to look for prostate cancer. You can treat prostate cancer by placing radioactive pellets in the prostate. Cryotherapy on the cancer of the prostate can also be done. Another, uh, but usually final option, is radical prostatectomy, and this can cause impotence in men or the inability to have an erection. Here's more pathology. Cryptochidism is the testes uh, failing, failing to descend in boys, and surgery is required to fix this. The testicles are abdominal organs and must descend into the scrotum as part of development. Gynecomastia is enlarged breast tissue in men, and this can come from too much estrogen or from certain medication side effects. Phimosis is the inability of the gland's penis to pass through the foreskin, and this requires surgery to fix. Impotence and erectile dysfunction are both the inability or difficulty for a man to have an erection. This can be treated with medications or certain devices. We are at the end of the week eight lecture. You're getting closer to being done with medical terminology. Good luck.